got to eat so much of God's word that you get so full of the anointing on the inside of you that that anointing doesn't just temporarily touch you, but it permanently changes you. Isaiah 10, verse 27 Israel was under the oppression of the Assyrians. How many have heard the scripture or the phrase, the anointing breaks the yoke? We have sung about it. We have prayed it. We've prophesied it. I want you to understand it. Isaiah 10, 27. It shall be in that day that the burden of the Assyrian shall depart from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck. The yoke shall be destroyed. Because of the anointing. That word destroyed can be translated annihilated. It's not just broken. It's annihilated. When the anointing breaks a yoke, it annihilates the yoke. Annihilation means past the point of return. You see, God doesn't want to just temporarily temporarily relieve you of a yoke. He wants to annihilate that thing so it can't return to your life. This is the freedom we're talking about in Christ. The yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. That word anointing in the Hebrew is directly translated fatness. Okay, we're about to understand what the anointing does. The yoke on your life is broken because of fatness. I'm going to tell you how the Amplified Bible reads it. The yoke shall be destroyed because of fatness which prevents it from being able to go around your neck. You are about to get fat tonight. Come on now. Because when we think of the anointing breaking a yoke, it is way more than you coming up to an altar, having a touch of God's presence, and then something just breaking off of you. It's way more than that. It's way more than that. I believe in those moments of encounter. I believe in it. We have seen it. I've experienced it. Where the presence, the tangible presence of God touches me and I feel something break off of me. I've seen it throughout my life as God has worked in my life. I have felt those encounters with God where something breaks off of me. But look, God doesn't want it just to be in a sense of his presence where something breaks off for me to go back out and go right back to that yoke after I leave that place of his presence. How many times do we have a yoke taken off of us only to walk right back out and put the yoke right back on? Because it still fits. It's not just about having the yoke broken. It's about making you so fat that that yoke can't fit back on you. It's about making, it's about growing your neck to the point where the yoke that once fit on you doesn't fit on you anymore. How do you get fat? By eating. Come on now. If you want to get a fat neck in the spirit, you got to eat the word of God. You got to eat the word of God. You cannot live. You cannot live just based on how you feel. You can't live just based on, well, I feel like being victorious today. Or I feel like doing the right thing today. You got to eat so much of God's word that you get so full of the anointing on the inside of you. That that anointing doesn't just temporarily touch you, but it permanently changes you. To the point where you get so full, so mature, so transformed on the inside. Not just, not just a temporary touch. But you get changed on the inside. You become what the Bible says is a mature son and daughter of God. You have learned to take off the diaper and grow up. You have learned to transform the way you think. You have learned to walk in the spirit. You have learned to say no to your flesh and yes to God. You have learned how to be mature. How do you become mature? By eating. How does a baby grow? You have to feed the baby food. If you don't feed the baby food, it's not going to grow right. And we come to God and we come to church one day a week on Sunday morning. We get fed a few scriptures and we think that's going to make us grow. That's a little bit of food. But you've got to get into the word of God yourself. If you're struggling in something, you've got to start meditating on God's word. You've got to start praying God's word. You've got to start speaking God's word. And what happens is that anointing starts to work in you. Your neck gets so big. For example, you used to live in depression. 
And now you start to read the word. Oh, in his presence is fullness of joy. Oh, I can have joy. I don't have to stay in this place of heaviness. I can live free in Christ. I have to begin to exercise and choose to praise when I don't feel like it. If you wait to exercise before you feel like it, you'll never exercise. Your flesh doesn't want to exercise. Your flesh wants to sit on the couch and eat donuts. That's what your flesh wants. You're never just going to want to exercise. The same thing with praising God. Your flesh is just going to want to sit there. But you make the choice to start to praise him. And as you start to praise him in a lifestyle, all of a sudden now your neck starts to grow fatter. And all of a sudden now you're changing by the anointing. And then the enemy comes back around you with that yoke of depression. And he tries to put it on you. But now it doesn't fit you anymore. He tries to put it on you, but it doesn't fit. Because now you've grown. You've overgrown the wall. You have outgrown the yoke. And this is how breakthrough happens. Not just an immediate breakthrough, but I'm talking about a lifelong breakthrough. How many want a fat neck here tonight? Come on now, we got to get fat. We got to get fat. I knew Jesus liked ice cream. <laughs> well, we got to get fat in the spirit. Oh, hallelujah. But this is where you can't let the process discourage you. Come on now. Can't let the process discourage you. I want to show you the wisdom of God. In Exodus 23. The wisdom of God. Exodus 23. When my angel goes before you and brings you to the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, the Mosquito Bites. <laughs> and I reject them and blot them out. You shall not bow down to their gods or serve them or do after their works, but you shall utterly overthrow them and break down their pillars and images. You shall serve the Lord your God. Now look at the blessing. You want to see the blessings that happen in breakthrough? He will bless your bread and your water. I will take sickness from your midst. None shall lose her young by miscarriage or be barren in your land. And I will fulfill the number of your days. Look what happens in the overthrow, in the breakthrough Against the adversary, God's going to bless your bread and water. He's going to bless your provisions. He's going to take sickness away from you. There's going to be prosperity, provision, and healing. This is what happens in breakthrough. There won't be miscarriages. You'll have fruitfulness in children, and you'll have a blessed land. Come on now. Fruitfulness, children, and land. And then he says, I'll fulfill the number of your days. In other words, you'll have a long life. These are the blessings that happen in the breakthrough that is established in Jesus Christ. Then he goes on to say, oh, I like this one. I will send my terror before you and I will throw into confusion all the people to whom you shall come. And I will make all your foes turn from you. Now, look, take this out of the human, put it in the spirit, put it in the spirit Verse 28, I'll send hornets before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites, the Hittites, and all the other rites. God's going to send hornets before you to drive the enemy out. Oh, hallelujah. God's going to put so much grace, favor, and power on you that he's going to cause the enemy to run from you. So much grace, so much power, the enemy's going to run from you. But look at the wisdom of God in verse 29. I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate for lack of attention and the wild beasts multiply against you. Little by little. Everyone say little by little. 
little by little, I will drive them out from before you until you have increased and are numerous enough to take possession of the land. This is the wisdom of God. I will drive the enemy out little by little. So the wild beasts don't multiply in the land against you, but I will drive them out little by little as you get stronger and stronger until you take full possession of the territory. Little by little, step by step, as you change, as you grow. God is driving the enemy out. Some of you have have thought to yourself, God, I don't see anything moving. I don't see anything changing. No, God is moving. Things are changing. But sometimes when things are changing in you, you don't always perceive it. Sometimes I'll come back to a place after I've been there a year later or something, and sometimes people say to me, oh, Matt, the anointing on you is higher. Oh, Matt, you've changed. You're different. When I look at myself, I feel exactly the same. But I've been with me for the whole year. I've seen me day after day. And you know how it is. You haven't seen someone for a period of time. And then all of a sudden you see them again. And you can see the change in them. You can perceive the change that they can't even see themselves. Sometimes you can't see the change that's happening in you. But it doesn't mean it's not happening. Don't let the process discourage you. Keep going step by step, little by little, day by day. Every single day you get a victory in that day, that's a step into breakthrough. Every moment you make a decision, I'm going to take this thought captive. I'm going to have self-control over my emotions. I'm going to make a decision not to walk in my flesh. Every time you make those little choices, those little steps, those little decisions, breakthrough is happening. Your roots are going deeper and your branches are going higher. And they keep growing little by little by little. When you look at a tree in springtime, you don't see that tree grow overnight. It's not like all of a sudden you come out one day and you're like, whoa, look at the change. Because you're seeing it grow little by little every day until all of a sudden somehow it's been transformed. That's how you are in the spirit. But every little choice you make, every step you take, there is a change that's taking place there is a growth happening in your spiritual neck there is a little bit higher you're going a little bit higher a little bit higher a little bit higher until the wall that looks so high now is really low and you go right over it 